in the debate, uh, many people said that it's economy which leads to the rise of uh, right-wing populist movements in Europe in general. But you said quite the opposite, if I understood you correctly. Uh, would you tell us why do you think so, that there is no correlation whatsoever between the austerity measures, the problems with the economy and the populism, uh, populist uh, right-wing movements rise in Europe? Yes, gladly I can do. Well, as I said in the debate, I limit my explanations to Western Europe. In this respect, in these countries, you see that indeed the countries which do economically very, very good, which is Northern European countries, first and foremost, Germany, Scandinavia, Netherlands, or the United Kingdom, here you see strong right-wing populist parties rising, while the Southern European periphery, where the Euro crisis, those territory measures hit very, very hard, Portugal and Spain, first and foremost, there you see no right-wing populist parties at all. The same goes for Ireland, also a country very hit by austerity measures, and there you see no right-wing populist party at all. And the reason for that is pretty plain. Right-wing populist parties do not have a profile in economic issues at all. Meaning, when voters are really concerned about money, about unemployment, about the future of the economic future of the children, they look for a party who has something to say about economics, about how to sustain um, economic stability. And their right-wing populist parties do a very, very bad job. While in the north of Europe, voters are less concerned about economics. They have literally enough time to worry about the culture of their country, the identity of the nation and so forth. And then right-wing populist parties can tap into these fears, these concerns, and then voters join them. But this, again, only works when the country is doing economically relatively fine. What about the inequality? Because uh, what you said, it concerns the Western Europe also. I mean, not only the program countries, so-called program countries in Europe, but uh, the UK, Scandinavia and other countries, the inequality is a big problem. And this could also lead to, to the rise of populism and, and uh, uh, right-wing uh, uh, movements. That's a good point. But even though the data suggests otherwise, again, what we see is that the voters who aim for right-wing populist parties are, for the largest extent, they are not the poor proletariat who face uncertainty, economically speaking. They are the middle classes, which have, relatively speaking, pretty decent jobs, and they shouldn't have to worry about the economic future. What you see is that in Scandinavia in particular, also in Germany, it's the middle classes with very proper jobs, pensioners or maybe former teachers, former servicemen who aim for these new parties. So again, the people who are really literally poor or they face economic uncertainties, these people are very little inclined to join these movements. So inequality, economic, economic problem as such, does not fuel the advances of these parties either. Mm -hmm. What is the case that what you can see is that people who feel economically vulnerable are far more receptive to buy in simple narratives that are provided by right-wing populist parties. But again, then the trigger is the narratives they provide in identity issues. And it's not the economic argument per se which is convincing economically vulnerable voters to join right-wing populist parties. Again, it's neither economics nor is it inequality per se. It needs to be mixed with a feeling of the culture of the country being endangered. And this usually requires a period of economic prosperity.